So now let's consider a function with derivatives f prime, f double prime, etc. up to the nth derivative defined at a. Then we say the nth order Taylor polynomial for f, with its center at a, is f of a plus f prime of a, x minus a, which we'll see right here is p1. And then I'm going to add in the f double prime of a over 2 factorial times x minus a squared, which we had for our quadratic expansion. And we're going to continue this up to the nth derivative. So the nth derivative of f at a over n factorial times x minus a to the n. So these are the Taylor polynomials. More compactly, we can write it as the summation from k equal to 0 to n of c sub k times x minus a to the k, where our coefficients are the k derivative of a over k factorial. So for example, let's find the first seven Taylor polynomials centered at x equal to zero for f of x equal to cosine. So we know that f of x is cosine x, f prime of x, is then negative sine x. f double prime of x is negative cosine x. Our third derivative would then be sine x. The fourth derivative is now cosine x. Fifth derivative is negative sine x. The sixth derivative is negative cosine x. And then our seventh derivative is sine x. So we need seven derivatives since we want seven Taylor polynomials. Evaluating each of these at zero, cosine of zero is one, sine of zero is zero, negative cosine of zero is negative one, sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one, negative sine of zero is zero, negative cosine of zero is negative one, and then sine of zero is zero. So now p of one comes from our first, our function and our first derivative. So in this case, it's just one, since our second derivative is zero. P sub two, this involves our first, sec, first and second derivative, so we have our function. The second derivative is zero, so the third would be minus one over three factorial x cubed. Since my third derivative is also zero, this is the same as the second. This is a squared, not a cubed. Two factorial. Okay, this is the same. My fourth polynomial, I'm now going to use my fourth derivative. So I have f of x. I'll deal with the second derivative. My third derivative is zero, and then my fourth derivative is one, so I have one over four factorial, x to the fourth. Since p sub, uh, since the fifth derivative is zero, this is also p five. P six, I was gonna add in using the sixth derivative. So the sixth derivative is negative one, so I have negative one over six factorial x to the sixth. And since the seventh derivative is also zero, this is the same thing as p of seven. Next we're going to use polynomials of the order zero, one, two, and three to approximate the square root of twenty. So to approximate the square root of twenty, we're going to have our function be f of x equal to the square root of x. This means f prime. 
will be 1 half x to the minus 1 half. Our second derivative, minus 1 fourth x to the minus 3 over 2. And our third derivative will be positive 3 over 8 x to the negative 5 over 2. We also need to know where we want to center this. Since we're approximating the square root of 20, we probably want to center at either 16 or 25, since these are the roots that we can easily evaluate that are the closest. Since 16 is only 4 away and 25 is 5 away, we'll do 16. So f of 16 is 4. f prime of 16 is then 1 over 8. f double prime of 16 is minus 1 over 256. And then my third derivative at 16 is 3 over 8192. So my 0th polynomial is just given by 4. So that's my first approximation, or rather my 0th approximation. p1 of x is given by 4 plus 1 over 8 times x minus 16. So when I evaluate this at 16, or at 20 rather, I have 4 plus 1 over 8 times 20 minus 16, which gives me 4.5. My second polynomial would be 4 plus 1 over 8 times x minus 16 plus the second derivative, so minus 1 over 256 times 1 over 2 factorial, which is just 2, times x minus 16 squared. So if I want to approximate 20, I have 4 plus 1 over 8, 20 minus 16 is 4, minus 1 over 256 times 1 half, and 20 minus 16 is 4, so 4 squared, which is approximately 4.469. The third polynomial would then be 4 plus 1 over 8 times x minus 16 minus 1 over 256 times 1 over 2 x minus 16 squared and then the last one plus 3 over 8192 times 1 over 3 factorial times x minus 16 cubed. So this time if I want to evaluate 20, I would have 4 plus 1 over 8 times x minus 16, or times 20 minus 16, minus 1 over 256 times 1 half times 4 squared, plus 3 over 8192, 3 factorial is 6, and then 20 minus 16 would be 4 cubed, which is approximately 4.473.